Hi friends, Kathy Medeo back with another tutorial. This one all about your shoulders in downward facing dog. I hope to provide you some clarity on what the heck is going on in the shoulder joint. Let's get started. I think part of the confusion with your shoulders and downward facing dog is in part because your shoulder joint is a complex joint. It's also a very mobile joint. There's lots of different bones and muscles and ligaments here. Also part of the confusion I think comes in our cueing as teachers and not distinguishing which part of the shoulder joint we mean when we give specific cues. So I, in a, in a way here to talk about which direction your shoulders go, want to separate a little bit the shoulder joint here into two different ways. So first I wanna talk about your upper arm, arm bone. This is your humerus bone. It sits in your glenohumeral joint or your socket here. So this arm bone can move in several different directions. It can go in external rotation away from your body. It can go in internal rotation, so rolling in. It can abduct, move away from your body, and it can adduct, move towards your body. It can also flex, this is forward, and extend, go behind you. And that's not to be confused with your elbow joint or your wrist joint. We're just going to talk about the shoulder joint here. So we know already in downward facing dog that our upper arm bone or our arm is flexed in the shoulder socket because it's above us, right? But one of the things I want to point out here is it's also an external rotation. Most postures are the upper arm bone is an external rotation when you're weight bearing on your hands. So that's kind of a general principle. So we can say for sure that in downward facing dog, we want your upper arm bone in external rotation and that the arm is flexed. We don't need to say that because it is so. So when your teacher might say something like roll your shoulders away from your ear, they're not talking about your shoulder blades. They're talking about your upper arm bone. So you wanna move the upper arm bone in external rotation in order for it to sit in the shoulder socket and be able to bear the weight on your hands. So now part two, the shoulder blades. So your shoulder blades move in six different directions. So we have upward rotation, upward. So the shoulder blades go out and up. And then we have downward rotation, they go down. We also have protraction. So the shoulder blades move away from the spine and retraction, the shoulder blades move in towards the spine. And we have elevation, the shoulders shrug up, and depression, the shoulders go down. Now there's no denying, just like with our flexed arm bone, there's no denying one of these movements in downward facing dog. When we bring the arms over our head, our shoulder blades go in upward rotation. So we don't wanna do things to kind of negate that natural movement. I see a lot of students trying to depress their shoulders in downward facing dog or retract their shoulders. I see a lot of students try to squeeze their shoulder blades together in downward facing dog. And that's kind of going against this natural movement of upward rotation. So what should the shoulders be doing, the shoulder blades be doing, right? We already have already established that they're in upward rotation. Now, when we're weight bearing on our hands and we have our shoulder blades, especially in that upward rotation, we wanna stabilize the shoulder blade a little bit. And the serratus anterior, which is this side muscle here, is one of the muscles that we can turn on to stabilize the shoulder blade. And so in downward facing dog, rather than bringing your shoulders down and depressing them and going against that upward rotation, you actually wanna push the floor away a little bit. So that's a slight elevation. That's gonna help stabilize those shoulder blades there on your back. So let's just look at this. We'll kind of see this in my body here. I'm going to take downward facing dog. I'll show some don'ts first. If our 
Upper arm bone is an internal rotation. It would look like this. You notice my elbows kind of bend. And that's also starting to bring my shoulder blades into retraction a little bit. So instead, remember, I want to externally rotate my upper arm bones. And then from there, rather than trying to squeeze the shoulder blades in towards the spine, we don't want that, right? We want to externally rotate those upper arm bones and then push the floor away. So those are our shoulders in downward facing dog. I hope separating these two areas of the shoulder joint was useful to you and that you're able to distinguish them in your own downward facing dog. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video.